Hello everyone and welcome to the 23rd Hammer Tutorial in the version 2 series. Today we're going to be going over custom content management focusing on Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This will still apply to other games such as Portal 2, Team Fortress 2, pretty much anything where you have custom assets and you need to put them into the BSP's pack lump so other people have that content when you ship the BSP. If you're shipping a mod, this pretty much doesn't apply to you since you can have the content be shipped in the materials or models or whatever respective folders they are or in the VPK system. The first thing you need to do is properly organize all of your files. This means keeping a project folder, if you will. I'm going to use DE Facade as an example since that's what's inspired me to make this video. Inside of Facade, I have my Facade project folder in Dropbox in case I need to revert, and I also have it on my laptops and all my other devices. We have a content folder. Inside this content folder is a folder that has all custom content that could be shipped with the BSP. When I start a new project, I create these right off the bat and get my Windows batch files created so that way I can have a proper developer environment set up for testing and shipping the new level. Once these are set up, you just need to keep all of your content in here, which also means that they need to be mirrored over to the game folders when you're working in Hammer, so Hammer can read that custom content. This involves also not contaminating what I call your pure game files. Your pure game files are kind of like if anyone else had the level. It's a fresh install of the game that doesn't have any custom content. This will allow you to test your level before shipping it to make sure that you haven't missed any custom content and you should always test before shipping. So let's first talk about a few scripts that I have written. And I'll also give these to you and they make your life a little bit easier. The first script creates what I call my developer environment. All it's going to do is purge old folders and create new ones based off of the pure folders in game. It's only copying six folders and it's making a new one. It's going to copy materials, models, uh, maps, resource, and scripts and sound. Those are all the things that can have custom content in them. So let me just show you what that does really quick. I have a new fresh install of CSGO. So here it is. This is my pure install. We're just going to go ahead and create that developer environment. So that's just going to copy those folders over and it's going to tell me that I may now mirror my resources once my dev environment is active. If I refresh this, I now have these dev folders. These dev folders are dormant or inactive. As long as they're named dev, the game doesn't care about them. So for me to switch to be able to look at my map in Hammer, if I were to do that now, we're missing all of my custom content. This is because that custom content is still, in fact, living over in my Dropbox folder. So we need to go ahead and mirror that over. That's what my second script is for, is uh, mirroring resources in conjunction with enabling my developer environment. So enabling developer environment, and these are just batch scripts. They're nothing fancy, and you can download them and edit the paths to fit your needs. All that this next one is going to do is it's going to rename some folders. And we just keep this open, and when we're done working on our level, we hit spacebar and it flips everything back. And we'll see that the dev folders are now gone and has replaced them with pure. If we look into maps now, there's nothing here because my dev maps folder is technically active. If we go to pure, here's all the maps that shipped with the game. Same for materials, and it's copied these so I can contaminate them and change things if I need. Now since I'm active in my developer environment, I can run my mirror resource. What the mirror resource will do is it just going to copy all of my content from my Dropbox folders into my game folders. So we we'll just run that, we'll hit any key, and it's going to copy those all over. So now if we look into materials, we see that we have facade here. These are some textures that are in facade. So there's a lot more content here than there was before, but if we look back in pure, it's not there, meaning that I can just roll back and it'll let me test to make sure that all my custom content's there. Now I can load up my level. And now we have all of our custom content. And then all I have to do is hit spacebar and it'll flip it back. So if I want to go play matchmaking or something after this, I can just revert all that content. I don't have to worry about re-verifying my game cache. Now let's talk about actually getting your content into the BSP after you compile. Doing constant updates to this level has taught me that automation is something that you should set up from the beginning and not wait till the last minute to do. It's just going to save you a lot of time in the long run. 
using bspzip.exe, something that comes with every Valve game. It's what it uses to put files into the BSP's Paclum. You can do this other ways by using Vide or Packrat or Map Analyst. There's a few others. If we just go back to the basics and use what we got, we don't have to download anything extra, and it does it automatically for us. There is a little bit of legwork that needs to be done on our end, though. This involves creating what's called the file list, and we also have to create a one additional compile command using the expert compiler. So let's just go ahead and do that now. It's all pretty simple. We first need to create a content list that is all our custom content that's going into our BSP when we compile it. We're just going to create a new text file in the same location as our VMF. I already have one made. It's called de underscore facade hyphen file list.txt. It needs to be in the same location as your VMF, map name hyphen file list.txt. If you name it that, you'll be good to go. Now we just need to get all of our custom content put into this file. Now, as you're adding and creating custom content, it's not that big of a deal to just manually add the things in as you create the content. But if you're just jumping onto this ship right now, you need to get your bulk content in there. We have a lot of content in Facade, so I needed to find a way to do this rather simply. So using Notepad++ Plus macro function and a little bit of the command prompt, we're gonna do this really easily. So we're going to start, run, and open our command prompt. And this is another reason why we kept all of our content in one location in Dropbox. So we're gonna grab this file path, we're going to type cd for change directory, open quote, right click to paste, close quote, and hit enter. That's going to take us right to the location. So now we just need to get all of the files put into a list so we can manipulate them in Notepad++. So the command for this is dir for directory slash capital A dot dot minus capital D. That's going to exclude directories. And this, these two commands will tell dir to list the full file paths in a different format. And now we just need to put it to a text file so we can copy and paste it. So we're just going to do caret, pointing over to the right, and we're going to give it a folder path. So I'm just going to drop it onto my e dot dot backslash as test dot text. We're going to hit enter, and it's done. So now we're just going to go to, to my e drive really quick, and here's test dot text. So this is all the content that is in Facade. There's 473 different files. So if we did this as we were creating Facade over those few months, not a big deal. It's completely menial. But to manually enter this would just be a pain in the neck. So we're just going to copy all of this and put it into our file list. Now we just need to remove any of our batch files that were picked up, which is just this mere content one. And now we have to create a line above each file telling it its internal directory. How BSP zip works is it uses this file list and there's an internal directory from which it's packed inside the BSP and the external directory, which is the full path to the file, which is my Dropbox location for collaborations, facade, content, yada yada. Using Notepad++ Plus's macro function, we can do this in a jiffy. This is where things can get a little hairy. Notepad++ Plus Plus has a macro recorder, so we're going to click at the end of our file, click macro, start recording. That means that Notepad++ is now capturing our input and it can play it back at super speed. So we're going to hold Shift Home, which selects the line, copy, home, enter to create a new line, go up, paste, so control V, home again to go to the beginning, and then we need to delete everything up into maps. So maps is the root. So all of this C Dropbox level design CSGO collaborations facade content slash needs to go. So we're just going to delete all that. And then we're going to go down, down, end. So that'll set it up for the next file. We just click macro, stop recording. And now we can play it back or hit control shift P and it'll instantly do it for us. So if I just hit control shift P, it's going to do it for every file in this document. So I just, you just got to hold it and it'll take care of the rest. And then once it gets to the bottom, we delete everything, and then we leave one blank line. For some reason, if there's not a blank line, BSP zip gets a little angry. So we're just going to save this file now. So now we need to go ahead and create the commands in Hammer to auto-pack this file. So now I'll go ahead and click Run Map, and I'm going to click Edit, and then I'm going to copy one of these. I'm going to copy my full compile HDR. And we're going to call this full compile HDR 
auto pack. Click OK and close. And now we just need to select our new auto pack here. And it's copied my already in use full compile HDR, which means I already have my threads here and it already has the final lighting commands that I want to use. It also has the copy and the game command, but I never use game command. Let's go ahead and add in the additional commands that we need to do. The first one is the one to tell it to pack the file. So click new here and then click CMDs executable. This is going to allow us to run an executable at this step in the compiler. So go to your Counter-Strike Global Offensive directory or your game directory, double click bin, and then BSP zip. You have to use the one that came with the game for BSP version compatibility, otherwise it won't work. So now you just need to move this up to be above the copy file command. And now we need to put in the following parameters. We need to put in add or update list with a dash in front of it. This is going to tell BSP zip to either add or update the list that's already in the pack lump. Since I mean there's nothing there, it's just going to add it. And then we need to tell it path file, which is going to load the BSP, followed by path file dash filelist.txt, which is telling it to load that file list that we made, and then where to save the BSP. So it's going to open it, pack this stuff, and put it back here. So just Put all that into that parameter and then that's it. It'll now auto compile. But since we're using this dev environment where it's in the pure folders and the dev folders, I want to be able to test it. So I want it to also copy to my pure folder as well. So we can do that with just another, another command. So click new, click CMDs and copy file. For this one, we're going to type dollar sign path slash dollar sign file dot BSP. So the source file that we're copying to dollar sign exe dir csgo maps underscore pure slash dollar sign file dot bsp and that's going to tell it to copy my bsp from my my dropbox folder to the maps pure folder so that'll allow me to have the copy in there as well so now i'm just going to tick all these and we'll let it compile and here we go the compile's done and if we scroll up just a little bit, we'll see adding file, C Dropbox, blah, 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 blah. And when we scroll down, we see the two copy commands. If we go to our maps folder here, we see that our BSP is a hundred meg. So that means that all of the custom content has been put into there. So we can also check inside of our game folders here to make sure that both files exist there. Inside maps, which is my hundred meg file here maps pure which will be de facade at 100 meg last edited today at 2201 so we can go ahead and close these out and flip back our dev environment here and now if we look our dev folders are now back to existing which means that the custom content is gone now I meaning when i load my level up it's going to be pulling from the pack lump in the BSP. Here we are back in Hammer, and my dev environment has been flipped, meaning that all this custom content's gone. So I just wanted to show you guys that, that the custom content is now missing, and we're going to load up the BSP. I'm actually going to load the game from in Hammer because it's actually just easier this way. So we'll go to Run Map Windowed, and you can add height and width here. It's load the map up right from here in Windowed Mode. So that way you can have a different video configuration for in-game when you're playing and for when you're uh, developing. So here we are, back in-game. We can go ahead and get rid of those bots. And there's no custom content in those folders, but all of our custom content is here. We have our brick, we have all of B here, custom textures here, custom railings. All this custom content has just been auto packed for us, meaning that now once you have this set up, you don't ever have to open Vide again. You don't ever have to mess with Packrat. It's just going to do it for you. And of course, the last thing that you truly need to do is build your cube maps. And after your cube maps are built, of course, we need to exit and reload. And this is just part of that verification process that I go through. So every time I update facade, I have to do this. So I'll show it to you guys. So 
We're back in game now, and there's two ways that you can verify that cube maps are built. We all know that I am a big fan of checking your op reflection, but these floors won't be shiny if cube maps aren't built. And like I said, of course, give weapon underscore op, and we can see the reflection in there, especially back over here by the trucks, we see that there's the purple glow. So that means that my reflections are built, my reflections are working, and it auto packed the map. So now it's automated. It didn't take us that long to set up, and now we just hit F9, compile, and we can test it with our friends. No longer have to worry about any of that packing nonsense. I hope this tutorial was helpful in getting you to auto pack your content, maybe make your life a little bit easier down the road. I hope you learned something about keeping your projects into a condensed folder in cloud storage, of course, in case you need to roll back or disaster recovery situations. Plus, it also helps collaboration with a friend like I did with Max when we created the facade. Shameless plug for Operation Vanguard. Go ahead and pick it up. You can play facade in there. It's pretty fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and happy mapping.